All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I'm really excited to have a couple of guests with me today. I'm going to let them introduce themselves a little bit more, but I'll, I'll let you know I did try their seasoning. I was very skeptical because I have not used any seasonings at all in a couple of years. Um, and so when they reached out to me, I was kind of like, eh, but it's an organ meat seasoning. And if you know anything about me, you know, I am passionate about organ meats. And so uh, this is how we kind of connected was through the seasoning that I'll let them talk about, but they are both going to do carnivore. Um, so we're going to do like a little miniature coaching call, talk to them about their goals and questions. So I figured, you know, we could just, this is a great way to introduce uh, this brand and, and them to all of you guys. And then I know a lot of you guys are still kind of testing the waters with carnivore and may have a lot of these same questions. So we figured we'd just jump on a call and, and kind of see what happens. So I'm going to hand it over to you guys if you'll both introduce yourselves and, and talk a little bit about your brand and, and then we'll jump into the carnivore questions. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Uh, so um, I'm James, I'm the founder and CEO of Pluck. This is what it looks like for those that don't know. Um, yeah, it's an organ-based seasoning and uh, we just launched, um, well, it's been in development for uh, over a year. We just launched on December and we're just getting amazing feedback from people like yourself who are want to get organ meat into their diets, but don't want to kind of deal with having to cook it all the time, having to deal with it, just, just want to get it more regularly into their diet. And um, also for those of us, because I'm like this, we don't want to have to deal with the taste of organ meat. This is an amazing product because it doesn't taste like organ meat, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. At all. Yeah. And you don't have to know how to cook organ meat. You don't have nope. to deal with it sitting in your freezer for months because you're not using it. Um, so it just kind of solves a lot of problems. Um, and our kind of tag is you, it's nutrition in a pinch. It's easy to get the nutrition from organ meat because it's one of the most super foods, most nutrient dense superfoods on the planet. And um, it just makes it so easy. And, um, and you can put it on everything and it just ups the nutrition value of everything you add it to. Um, but I've been a chef actually for 16 plus years. I've been in the health field primarily. It's all about, I work with, a, I owned a meal delivery service for eight years. I've worked as a private chef. Um, and that's actually how I originally met um, Amanda, uh, who I will let you introduce yourself. My name is Amanda. Thanks for having us, Sarah. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Loved connecting with you over Instagram and now on Zoom. Uh, so I am also a personal chef. I specialize in working with people who have uh, autoimmune disease and severe allergies and sensitivities. So um, coming into this I, product that James started, I was immediately super excited um, because it has to do with organ meats. And um, what else do I want to say? Was well, so you um, came sure. on specifically? Yeah. So something Amanda doesn't always talk about. So she has a design background. So she was in the clothing industry. She just has a really amazing design sense. And so she saw me starting the uh, Pluck Instagram, and she immediately, like, no joke. I think the day after the first day that I posted, she's like, "Um, do you have anyone doing social media for you?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> she's like, "I think you need somebody. I'm gonna do it." <laughs> so she basically took it over, and she gets full credit. If anyone thinks it's amazing, because I personally do, I mean, she has done an amazing job and it's all her. Um, so she's officially doing social media, yeah. connecting. She is a outreach community connection. She's helping um, something that's really important to us as individuals, but also pluck as an, in, as a business is that we are, you know, we want to help people. That's mm -hmm. primarily why we exist. Yeah. But the other thing is we want to build a community. And that is uh, very much what Amanda is great at and as she is doing. Yeah, I just kind of naturally came into this role. Um, obviously with COVID that changed a lot of like what I'm able to chef. Uh, retreats aren't happening and big events aren't happening. And I had this extra time um, on my hands and I, I really wanted to be purposeful with it. And, and the building community aspect was uh, a big part of me wanting to be a part of this company. So uh, I will be on the social media. And if you guys want to come check us out, we're at Eat Pluck, P L U C K. Um, and I'll be receiving all those messages and posts and love interacting with you guys. Yeah. And like I said in the very beginning, I have not used seasonings in a couple of years. I've been 
really trying to heal a lot of autoimmune issues. And I was able to introduce this one with absolutely no problems. And I love it because I could just kind of sprinkle it on my eggs. I can cook it on, you know, put on grilled meat. Like it's versatile. You don't have to just, you don't have to just use it for cooking. You can like you were, I think you had put it on. I saw it on one of your Instagram posts the other day, you went to a restaurant and then put it on as a topping. And I was yeah. like, oh, wow, I could, I could do that too. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, it's so fun. It's it adds a little, little, just to give you guys an idea, the pluck flavor has a strong umami flavor to it that naturally comes yes. from the organ meats. Um, and then it's blended with organic herbs and spices to make it extra delicious. And it, it, it's an all purpose seasoning. So it goes over everything. Like you said, you can do it on your takeout, your steak, or your eggs, or your a salad, vegetables, or a soup. If yeah. you're a carnivore, you know, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But I'm particularly excited that, that you had, had done so much healing that you didn't have any inflammatory response to, you know, the, the seasoning, which does have black pepper in it. Mm -hmm. It does have some seed spices and uh, smoked paprika a little bit, but it's in there. So if you're really, really sensitive uh, to spices, you will want to just try a little bit or know your body and know what you've introduced and what you haven't introduced. But I know that there's a big audience out there for yeah. it seasoning so we hear you guys we are going to develop it this year yeah. will be coming and and, and as uh, as as um amanda mentioned the amounts of these other things is it's extremely it's small it's yeah. so small the majority of pluck is onion garlic and and um and organs yeah that, that is the the the, the most the the, the the largest amount of the ingredients are those three items. So everything else is so small. So it doesn't surprise me that you're not re you know, reacting. Nothing. And my daughter actually loves it also because she loves uh, chicken thighs. I cook chicken thighs for her a lot. <laughs> and she loves the seasoning on the chicken thighs, just bake in the oven. It's ridiculously easy. I'll put it on her chicken wings. And um, if Alexis likes it, that's, that's always the litmus test. Like I may like something, but for me to recommend it to people who follow me and subscribe to me, I'm like, look, my 13 year old, uh, autistic child who has texture issues, taste issues, like aversions, like you wouldn't imagine if she likes it, then I will give it my, <laughs> my two thumbs up and say that it's, it's something that you could probably feed your kids also, and know that they're going to be getting the benefits of organ meats, you know, which is amazing for children. I mean, it's amazing for everyone, but you know, I'm very passionate about nutrition for children, especially children with special needs. They need that extra boost in my opinion, to help them with the brain development and regulation and all those things. I see, um, a great benefit for, for that population also. Yeah. Then you you you, you definitely understand this, uh, just as a parent, but also special needs. So my, my daughter, uh, cause any parent that deals with a child, that is struggling to get nutrients in their body. That's picky. Mm -hmm. That's texture oriented. Anything like that. So my my youngest, uh, when she was around two, got shiga toxin, which is deadly uh, wow. for for elderly and kids. It's deadly, and we we got it. We think on a trip to Canada, and both of my girls got it, but the older one got through it within a few days. And shiga toxin, for those that don't know. Basically, you can't hold anything down. So you're throwing oh. everything up or you're, it's diarrhea. And so she was only two and she was already a small child. And um, she had had it for five days and I had to go out of town. And it looked like she was on the upswing. I don't know what had happened the day I was leaving, but for some reason I left thinking, oh, she's getting better. And I was so relieved. So I was leaving feeling positive, right? And I came back two days later and she was not better. She was still struggling and she was skin and bones. Like just mm. looking at my two-year-old daughter and seeing just, she had wasted away, scared me so much. And that, I, I always attribute that moment to when pluck, I started conceiving of it. It's not when I came out with it, but it's just, I think that's where mm. I, it planted the seed of like, I feel desperate as a parent. I want to get nutrients into my child, but she can't hold anything down. If I had had the one thing she started to be able to hold down was toast, mm. right? And we're gluten-free. So it was a gluten-free toast, which gluten-free toasts are not healthy. No. Not. <laughs> no, we did and those felt, for years. <laughs> yeah, right? And so yeah. I was you know, just going like, oh, I just felt as a parent, I'm like, she's not getting what she needs. And if I yeah. had luck at that time to just sprinkle on the toast, I just would have felt 85% better. You know what I mean? I just would yeah. have felt 
so much better about what she was eating and knowing that at least I'm getting something in her that's good for her, you know? But, yeah. uh, but I, 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 I feel that struggle. I know a lot of parents, particularly mm -hmm. uh, in our world that deal with picky eaters. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And what's cool. And I think your daughter's testimony is definitely one of the best I've heard in terms of um, her history and knowing mm -hmm. that she likes this, but I have not heard from one parent that their kid doesn't like it. Like every kid who's tried it has liked it. So, so far we're, we're batting, you know, perfect score, which I can't believe. I'm just shocked. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, I'm excited yeah. to watch it grow and uh, be part of the Pluck community and see all the exciting stuff I know is going to roll out of just, you know, just the very beginning here because we're in January and you just launched in December. So, yeah. And it's crazy. A lot of the people that follow me, you know, uh, they ended up buying it and I've gotten tremendous feedback. I've even oh, seen cool. some of my friends posting it in their stories and posting on their feeds, just trying it out with different recipes. Somebody made my, um, my waffles and actually use the seasoning in with the waffle. Yeah. With the waffle batter. I was like, what? That's a brilliant idea. Cause it's, um, it's not a sweet waffle. You know, if you've tried, I don't know if you guys have seen my, um, the carnivore Yogi waffles, <laughs> they're not sweet, but they do have a, like a nice texture. Um, if you're missing bread or you're missing that muffin, but yeah, she mixed in some of the pluck seasoning and put it in her waffle maker and then topped it with butter. And she said it was just super savory. Just, yeah. 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 That's the thing we, you know, we're still a new company, right? So even though I've been working with it for over a year, I still don't know all of what it works for. I, yeah. I haven't found anything that it doesn't work for yet. That's savory. But I mean, we had someone, someone messaged Amanda said, Oh, they sprinkled it on top of pomegranates. Oh, and I was wow. like, I never would have thought that, but she said it was delicious. So you yeah. just, we're, we love that. Just, we encourage everyone who uses it, like try it on things and let us know, like, yeah, shoot us, shoot us something on Instagram at eat pluck. Just let us know. Cause we're, we want to discover how versatile it is too. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's talk a little bit about carnivore. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. Cause I know it's going to be different, but kind of what are your goals? What are you hoping to get out of doing carnivore? Is it just curiosity or do you have specific things that you're kind of looking to achieve or, or experience? Well, I'll let Amanda speak for herself, but I know like I'm typically like, I treat myself like the guinea pig. Like, like if there's something out there that I haven't done, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. Cause I just want to see, I'm always searching or what works best for my body. And I'm, and I think you're similar in this way. Mm -hmm. At least one man has told me that I'm not, I don't advocate one way of eating for everybody. Cause we're all, you know, bio individuality, we're all different. And I'm not dogmatic about one thing, except for maybe eat real food. Right. Yes. That's, that's the one thing I mm -hmm. do stand behind, but I've never done the carnivore, even though I'm probably, I definitely uh, lean heavily toward animal protein. But I've never fully done the carnivore diet. What intrigues me the most about it is that reading the testimonies and hearing even from yourself, like the, the repair work that has happened from the diet. And so that's what I'm curious about because I'm always looking to optimize and, and I'm excited to, to see how my body responds to it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm the same. I would never recommend to somebody, a client especially, to try some healing protocol that I wouldn't try myself. Right. Like I don't have any known autoimmune disease or, or any um, big health issue that I'm working with, but I do want to experience what a protocol feels like. And so it's a big curiosity for me. Um, you, Sarah, are a huge inspiration actually, like hearing, uh, connecting with you on Instagram last month and, and hearing how many benefits you've received from the protocol. And uh, of course, being an organ meat seasoning company, yeah. we see a lot of carnivore things in our feed and it draws the carnivore community. Um, thankfully, we're so thankful for that. Um, and so it's just been, you know, in our feed recently a lot. And so I'm just yeah. like, huh, okay, how is it yeah. going to be? So thank you so much for taking this time. I do have some questions that I'm really yeah. curious about. Absolutely. I go, just go right on ahead. Yeah. yeah. So my biggest one is that I'm starting my menstrual cycle right when we're going to start the carnivore diet. And so I want to know, is that a good time to start the carnivore diet or not a good time to start the carnivore diet? 
Yeah. You know, that's such a great question. And I, I wish more women would, when they come into this way of eating, consider their cycle, consider their hormones instead of just kind of railroading into it. And um, there are considerations, but uh, really when you start your cycle, I just did a great podcast that'll come out. We're recording on Sunday, so it's going to come out this Thursday. So it'll probably be out um, now once this is up and posted, but with Dr. Mindy Pels, who she's actually started using carnivore in some of her groups. And we had a really in-depth conversation about um, carnivore, keto, fasting, all of that, and how that really plays into women's hormones. And what she really said is days uh, one through 14, you can fast as much as you really want to, you can do carnivore, you can kind of get away with most of those things a lot better than you can if you go um, into, if you were just starting off during your ovulation, she'd say, meh, probably not the best time or the week before your cycle starts. So the, you know, days 21, uh, through 28, that's when you kind of would not want to start. Yeah. That's because you're, you're needing to build, um, progesterone during those times. And when you're building progesterone, um, your body needs progesterone building foods. And now for me as a woman doing carnivore and kind of had to troubleshoot quite a bit, um, I find that, uh, during ovulation and the week before my cycle, I just have to make sure I really push that fat up really high. Um, because if I don't, that's when I start to just really not feel well. And th that those are those times too, ovulation and then before your cycle that I definitely make sure I get organ meats. I mean, very strict organ meats, very strict, high fat ovulation and the week before your cycle. But um, those first two weeks, you're, you should be good to go. Um, you know, I would definitely say for both of you guys to make sure that you've got a good Redmond sea salt, um, replenishing electrolytes is the biggest thing for people in the very beginning that they, you know, they feel okay for the first few days and then they just kind of hit a wall, um, because your body without the carbohydrates is just not going to be able to hold on to those minerals. And so you will have to replenish in order to not, you know, get that keto flu for sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to talk about, because um, I'm sure you're hearing a lot about the, the meat-based diet, you know, like a lot of the changes that are happening, but on a, on a basic level, so mm -hmm. what I'm learning carnivore diet is animal product and salt, mm -hmm. basically, right? And is that what you did initially to get the positive effects you got? Yeah. My first 30 days was so simple. Um, you know, it's funny people follow me now. I think they probably get confused because I've done so many different experiments within carnivore, but really when I first started, I did grass fed ground beef, we've got white oak pastures down here. So I get a lot of meat from them. Um, uh, but I just did grass fed ground beef. I did some bacon and I did some eggs and I haven't really, um, I've gone through taking out whites now and I feel better without them for the most part. Uh, but I, that's what I did. I ate the egg whites and I did scrambled eggs. I did, uh, but mostly it was just ground beef and bacon. Um, and I did a little bit of butter too. And, and I got tremendous benefits in that first 30 days. I mean, the, it was coming off Christmas. So <laughs> there was an initial weight loss that, you know, I, I didn't really have a lot of weight to lose. Um, but I did lose about seven pounds in the first two weeks because I had so much inflammation that dropped off me and so much water that dropped off me. Um, so yeah, it was, I didn't overcomplicate it really. I just stuck within those. I didn't do dairy because some people, I feel like if you want to get the maximum benefit, um, you want to take the dairy out because I see a lot of people that do react to dairy. Um, so yeah, even if you eat you it now, butter in and opposed yeah. to doing meat. Yeah. Butter was fine for me. Butter didn't really bother That's me. That's typically the case for some yeah. people that are dairy sensitive. Maybe right? I'll try that. I, I definitely want to, I want to take dairy out one because I did elimination diet probably eight years ago and I had a, a reaction to dairy mm. um but I, I have been eating it for a long time but I primarily just don't want to rely on cheese because I feel oh yeah like no I would just be gobbling bacon and cheese all day yeah it's like keto dieters in. default to like the cheese well, well I mean to nuts right mm -hmm. like I could see carnivore defaulting to cheese like a, you know you still have a vice, right? It, yeah. And really do eliminate all of it, all of the potential vices. Yeah. And it can continue to create inflammation in the body. Also, that was a big one for me that, 
Um, I came into carnivore and I was, I couldn't do a lot of things that I wanted to do athletically. I just had a lot of joint pain and inflammation. And so um, I knew for me, I just needed to get, I just needed to not mess around with the cheese. And it's so easy to overeat. Like you were just saying, it's delicious. And um, I do see a lot of people that will just rely so much on the cheese. It's like, well, you're not really getting the full benefits of the nutrients from meat. You know, people don't really realize how much nutrition, just a good grass fed red meat has in it and how um, wonderful it is for your body and, and so repairing um, just the fat and the meat. Is there a reason why you didn't do lamb or is it just sourcing or something? Um, I, I, you know, I added lamb in later. I just had never really had lamb before, to be honest with you. That's oh, a little really? embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, I think I'd had it at like weddings, you know, lamb chops and special things here, but I never really uh, had explored it before, but I do now love lamb. Um, I think it's wonderful, but yeah, I just had never, I wasn't a big meat person before carnivore, which is kind of funny. I just, you know, I was trying to be, uh, heavily plant-based with a little bit of meat. And it just was plain old wrecking my body, to be honest. Uh, did you, uh, did you, um, during that, your first initial, I, I want to focus on your initial 30 days. Cause as you said, you, you've gone other directions mm -hmm. and added in, and I'm for my first 14 to 30 days, I really want to stay like as strict as possible with the initial, um, cause I've done other things. So adding other things to me is easier, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Whereas keeping it um, really strict to the, just the animal product and potentially the salt and maybe the butter, mm -hmm. um, that to me is actually easier than if I ease in other things. Like I, I find that when I have the restrictions and it's a very tight restriction, it's actually easier for me to follow it. Oh yeah. But my, so I'm curious though, um, first of all, you said you did ground beef. So mm -hmm. did you cook it or did you ever eat it raw? Like how I never, I never would have imagined eating anything raw in the beginning. And <laughs> there's no way in hell I would have done that two years ago <laughs> now. Sure. But two yeah. years ago, I, I, that would have completely scared the crap out of me. I mean, yeah. I eat raw egg yolks and all sorts of stuff now, but back then, no, everything right. was cooked. Yeah. You do it now though, you're, you'll sometimes do it raw. Oh yeah. I'll do like a tartare. It's yeah, it's delicious. But back yeah. then I was way skeeved out by the thought of any kind of raw meat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and then, um, did you, so you stuck mostly to the ground and I, I can understand the ease of that. Um, did you, uh, we noticed like some, some of the, one of the books we were looking at, they were suggesting in their meal plan two two real meals a day and then maybe a snack. But how did yours break? How, how would you, for someone who's just starting out, what would you what do you recommend in terms of meals and then also sizes amounts? Because we heard uh, about two pounds for for men, a pound and a half for women, and of course you got to follow your own body. But so, yeah, I want to just say something before you answer that question. Or I guess it's a two part question. My question is. Can I go in just listening to my body? I do feel like I am pretty in tune with mm -hmm. body cues personally. And can I just trust that I'm going to eat until I'm satiated and, and see how that works out? And if I feel like my energy levels are going lower or something, you know, eat more, or incorporate a mm -hmm. little more fat and just really allow into intuition to come into play. I'm wondering, can we, can we just start that way? Yeah. I mean, what I say to people a lot of time is that carnivore is kind of like a mirror and, um, you have to always consider your eating habits before you started, um, as far as kind of what you're going to see and what you're going to experience. If someone, you know, jumps from standard American diet and they're not intuitive, they're eating a lot of processed foods and they don't really have a good handle on their hunger signals going to carnivore and eating like intuitively is going to be very difficult for them because they just don't know how to do that period. Um, but I think if you've kind of, you know, been doing that already, I think you can trust your hunker signals a bit more. Uh, I do recommend when people first start that they don't try to do any fasting. Um, so two meals a day, I consider fasting. Some people would say it's not, um, unless they're already doing fasting, you know, unless they already kind of have an intermittent fasting type of lifestyle or schedule. I always tell people, you know, it's better if you just start off to do, um, three meals a day, 
And then you may find once you do this, and I always tell people wait at least six weeks or so, um, because people I think are too quick to rush into fasting and eating windows and all those things that you really want to get used to the lifestyle and um, allow your body to become fat adapted before you start doing anything like that, because you could put too much um, stress on your system because it is stressful on the body when you start to take away carbohydrates, when you go down to a more uh, limited, you know, food groups, it is stressful on the body. And so you want to keep your stress low, um, during this time, just all around. And for me, I see people having a bit more success with three meals a day. That's what I did in the very beginning. And then I actually kind of gravitated, uh, a few months into doing more fasting, which, um, there's a whole other topic, but it just became a lot easier for me to do that. And I found myself like, oh, I missed a meal. And I didn't, Dr. Annette Boz, she's not carnivore, but she's a big proponent of keto. I love her. Um, but she says, you know, you know, you're fat adapted when you miss a meal and it's not breakfast because a lot of people can easily skip breakfast because they have a lot more cortisol in the morning. But, you know, if you skip lunch or dinner and you were like, oh, I didn't, even mean to do that. That's when you know you're fat adapted is when something like that starts to happen, but not to ever try to force it, you know? Hmm. Now, yeah. what's your thought about um, caffeine? Now, clearly, if you've been doing coffee a lot, you should ease out of it. Mm, but yes. How about how did you handle your first 30 days? Did you go cold Turkey? What did you do around caffeine? I did black coffee and I did, I continued to do coffee up until probably about a year ago. Um, I still did my black coffee and it didn't really cause me any problems. I just about a year ago decided I wanted to just totally change things up and take it out, see how I do without it. Um, so, you know, there are some carnivores that are like strict, say no caffeine, don't do it. It's going to mess up your results. But I think again, if you are, if you're a regular coffee drinker, you, you know, you may have a little dependence there and that kind of goes along with the stress thing. And so I think to have, you know, one cup uh, black coffee in there is not going to hurt you, you know, if that's something that you're already doing. So it's, it's really a personal decision, but just, I always like to remind people of the stress factor. Um, so that, that kind of plays into that also. Cool. Um, I want to ask another question. I watched a few of your videos and uh, one of them, you talk about HCL supplementation to help with the mm -hmm. digestion of protein because we're really upping it quite a bit. Um, I was wondering if you had any thoughts on doing hot lemon water or a little bit of ACV in water to stimulate the gastric juices versus an HCL. Like I, I think it's great. Allowed, yeah. How do you yeah I mean, it's like, it's technically not carnivore, but I have, I do, I've, I'm becoming less and less dogmatic kind of as if I go here and, um, less of a one size fits all. And I have some people that can't tolerate the HCL supplements that I've worked with and, um, that they do great with a shot of apple cider vinegar before the meal and they love it. It's like a treat for them. Um, or lemon water. So I think that's totally fine. Um, people that have a lot of histamine intolerance, a lot of food intolerances, they can't necessarily handle the lemon and the apple cider vinegar. But I think that that's totally fine if you want to use that in lieu of an HCL supplement. Cool. Yeah. Pooping. What, what, <laughs> what, uh, so we, we, we know yeah. that carnivore diet, you, you don't have as much fiber as previously. Mm -hmm. So I imagine the first week as you turn your body transitions is probably a little crazy. What, what are your thoughts around pooping and tip, tips around that? You know, for, I've been, I was very blessed that it just was never a problem for me. I mean, oh. my digestion got remarkably better when I did carnivore, because I was doing a lot of plants, a lot of greens and just trying to get all those nutrients in. Um, and so when I went to carnivore, it was like, oh, all my, my body was like, thank you. And I would just, you know, pretty much just go once a day in the morning and that was it. And yeah, cause the other way it was like five times a day and like, just, you know, just not, not fun. Um, but that's been one thing for me that it's been, uh, pretty seamless is just, you know, once a day in the morning. Now, when I did push up to like really high fat, cause I do a more high fat version of carnivore. And I think it's a lot better for, um, women, especially if they're having any kind of hormonal disruption or insulin resistance to go to super high fat. 
the first six weeks I did a high fat carnivore diet where it was like 90% fat, 10% protein, which is really high fat. Yeah, I did. I had to do that to get my, um, reproductive cycle to come back because it was gone from doing too much fasting. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably a story in itself. That's, that's hard. Oh yeah. What were you doing? Mostly suet or what were you doing? I was doing doing a lot of suet, a lot of like just uh, beef fat. I love frozen beef fat. Um, So yeah, it was mostly suet and mostly beef fat. And, but it was like magic for my hormones. I mean, I had lost my cycle and my doctor says, you're going to early menopause. And I was like, uh, what? Um, and so I did that protocol. I quit doing all fasting and within two weeks, my cycle came back and it has been, um, every single month for the last almost year. And I've ovulated every month. I test for ovulation. I do the little LH strips and all the other methods. So, I mean, I've, it's, it's literally been magic. So I do help a lot of people do that higher fat version, um, and advocate for it for some people that have really bad insulin resistance, which I definitely had. Um, but when I first did that for the first six weeks, I had to take HCL, um, with my meals at the very beginning, because I was getting really loose stools. Um, and that's one thing I do here with people what that go to carnivore, even if they don't do a lot of fat, they're just not used to, um, all that protein and then the animal fat also, because most people pick the fat off their steaks. And so they, you know, they, they just pick it off and throw it to the side. So that is one thing, um, you know, some people can get the constipation, which is, it's kind of confusing because that can be a low stomach acid or, um, they get the loose stools, which is also (laughs) low stomach acid. Um, so that's just a consideration there. And that's another reason why I tell people don't just try to do all steaks. I know a lot of us carnivores have these great steak photos and pictures of us grilling steak. Um, but the ground meat is a lot easier for your body to digest, uh, when you're first starting, and then you can start to to do more steaks, but that's kind of why I advocate for that a little bit more. Wow. Okay. Um, Anything else? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm just looking are we? Are there some common questions that we that you get asked for people that are just starting that we haven't asked yet, or that would be beneficial for us to hear? You know, I I really like Amanda's idea of just um, being intuitive. I think that's the biggest question: is like, how much do I eat? And um, you know, like I said, you kind of have to consider your goals. Uh, I don't think either of you look like you're going to be on some sort of like extreme (laughs) weight loss protocol or anything like that. I think that's more just experimentation. So I think you can just be a little bit more intuitive, um, and just kind of go with how you feel. Some men also do need to add fat. You know, some people can just go, um, and I think they're for your first 30 days, you don't have to worry so much about adding fat or not adding fat. Um, just kind of go with how you feel. And, but I would say the three meals and, um, just, yeah, just, if you're hungry, eat a little bit more. Um, if you're starving, listen to that, you can have a burger patty, um, or some bacon that you keep in your fridge. Don't try to fight through hunger. Oh, that actually brings up two questions. So one is around bacon. So a lot of bacon, um, is sometimes honey cure, cure honey or sugar. Um, how dogmatic are you around that stuff? I stay away from anything cured with sugar or honey or anything at all. I found um, here, and I don't know if they have it out there on the West Coast where you guys are, Nature's Rancher has a good uh, sugar-free. And I know it's probably got a cup, some nitrates in it, even though it says nitrate-free, I'm I'm sure it's got something in there that's not like, you know, as Dr. Ken Berry says, like panda massaged, Um, (laughs) you know, but we do great with that. We, we eat that. Um, So I think that's fine, but I do stay away from the sugar honey cured because that can um, raise your blood sugar. And one of the great benefits I think that people see with the carnivore diet is a stabilized blood sugar. You know, um, a lot of our health issues and things, inflammation do kind of start with blood sugar that's out of control. Um, so anything with any sugar sweeteners, anything like that, I tell people to just try to stay away from that as much as possible. Cool. And then the other question was around, um, uh, being active, you know, if you're someone who runs or does any kind of exercise, is it similar to other diets like keto, where maybe the first few days you're kind of gentle with your body, but then you kind of kick in or what, what's your, what's your advice? Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I think that it's like with anything, like I, we all go back to that stress idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
and exercise is a stressor on the body, even though it's like a, it's a hermetic stress. So we get stronger and, and work our, our heart and all those things from exercise. But when you're doing such a big dietary shift, I always tell people the first 30 days, even maybe I'm super conservative, but just to take it easy, don't do, go do CrossFit or powerlifting, um, you know, and just listen to your body. If you go for a run and you feel like it's really hard for you to recover, just listen, the recovery, you know, phase is really what you want to listen to. If you're just feeling like it completely wiped you out, um, then lay off for a little bit, you know, let your body get adapted and get into it. And then you can start doing more. Um, that's what I think. And for sleep, um, cause I've noticed previously with, with, with me, if I eat meat too close before I go to bed, then I'm sweating more during the night cause I'm digesting. Do you have any advice around like, is it kind of similar to just eating in general? Like try to have your last meal a couple hours before you actually go to bed or have you added anything different around the carnivore diet? Yeah. I mean, now that I do a really high fat approach, I don't really have the same problem that I did when I was doing more like the two pounds of meat per day protocol. Um, I can, now I can eat at like seven at night and sleep just fine. But when I was doing a lot heavier protein and not really adding the fat and moderating the protein down, um, I would have to have my last meal be at five o'clock, um, like a five o'clock cutoff. Otherwise I would have, um, have this aura ring. And so I would notice that I would have a lot more sleep disturbances. I wouldn't, there we go. <laughs> I wouldn't get my deep sleep. Um, so for me, I would have to cut it off at five when I was doing a lot more protein. Um, so a couple of ways that I would get around that is sometimes for dinner, I would just have like bacon and eggs. Um, that I would sleep fine with the bacon and eggs for dinner, or like I kind of do now just a smaller amount of protein and, and a lot of fat for dinner. And I, I can, like I said, I can eat that at seven o'clock at night and I'm fine. That actually brings up a, I think a, I might try that. I, I like mm. that idea just preemptively to try and help with. That brings up an interesting point though. It's like, do you find that each meal is progressively different because it's at a different time of day? So like, is your last meal higher in fat, whereas your the maybe lunchtime meal is higher in protein, or is, is there any distinguishment around that depending on what time of day you're eating the, the food? I think I intuitively just kind of do that. I mean, it's I would say that I probably eat more protein like earlier in the day, and then just towards the end of the day have a more fat heavy meal. Um, just intuitively because I've just been doing this so long, but in the beginning I didn't, I just kind of just said, all right, I feel like having burgers for dinner. That's what I'll have. And that was that. <laughs> so I just kind of figured it all out. Yeah. Now this is kind of an interesting topic, uh, cause not a lot of people talk about it, but pork. Okay. So mm -hmm. we, bacon is a huge go-to for carnivore dieters, keto people as well, paleo as well. I'm <laughs> kind yep. of almost anyone, right? Um, but pork is is one of those animals that um, is closest to human meat. There's there's studies that show that it actually we don't digest it. Like when you first eat it, it's actually toxic, and it takes a few hours for it to not be toxic. Um, there's lots of kind of data out there, but it's all nothing's really like clear. It's kind of all over the place. So have you have you ever done any markers? Have you ever gotten done no pork? versus doing lots of pork? What, what's your experience around that or your advice around that? Um, you know, I think everyone is so individual. The, the thing I have seen with people is that um, people with histamine issues tend to not do so well with pork. They don't feel well with it. It causes reactions. Um, so I always just tell everyone, you know, when you're first starting out, you know, unless you, you know, bacon is one of those things that kind of slides in there. Um, but you know, and I feel for, for whatever reason, people, I think react a little bit less to bacon if they are going out and eating pork shoulder and these other things for, for, I don't even know the science behind it. Um, but I do tell people, you know, maybe stick more to ruminant animals in the very beginning and just see how that makes you feel. And then, and then introduce pork, like it would, you know, be like another thing that you're introducing. Um, but yeah, I haven't, you know, I just see different people react to pork and then some people eat tons of pork. I know that there's one, a uh, long-term carnivore who mostly eats pork. Now he doesn't really even eat a lot of red meat. He just mostly eats pork and, you know, says he's feeling really good with that. So it's so individual. Yeah. And so if, 
if bacon is kind of like the cheese of meat, you know, yeah. you know when I say yeah. that, like you're kind of like, what would you say if you're not eating bacon, what would be the ruminant of comparable? Would you say just a hamburger? Yeah. Just burger patties. I yeah, think burger patties about- are really the simplest thing for people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? I don't think so. I'm I'm staying saving my. I haven't had bacon this week because I'm expecting to have quite a bit of it when we start. Um, but I don't think I have any questions. I'm I'm really looking forward to having bringing in oysters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. raw fish and like I think we said earlier we're gonna try some raw beef. We're gonna do yeah. Raw, you know. I don't know. Yeah, James and his wife be. actually ate primal raw for 30 days wow we were with them one night this is many years ago back in los angeles and uh it sat so well it's just like all the enzymes are intact it's so easy to digest and and we were quite satiated with with less meat almost it seemed like yeah so we're gonna try that out um i do appreciate your recommendation for not having dairy i'm gonna leave that out um And then with the fish, I mean, I think fish is wonderful, but just make sure if you're having fish that you also get enough fat. Yeah. 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 And any kind of chicken too. That's why, you know, I tell people you can have chicken, um, but if you're going to have chicken, make sure you're getting the skin, make sure that you have, you know, you're adding some fat with that because what ends up happening with, cause I love fish. I have bacon. I just had bacon wrapped scallops the other night. They're so good. Um, we do bacon wrapped, o- you're seeing a theme, bacon wrapped oysters. <laughs> um, I have to pair a fat with that seafood. Otherwise I get really hungry afterwards. It tends to um, spike my spike my blood sugar up. So um, with any kind of seafood, just make sure you've got a nice fat in there with it. Cause I think seafood's awesome. Um, a lot of people don't get enough of those uh, omegas that you can get with the fish when on a carnivore diet, because they stick so much to their, to the ruminant and they don't eat enough grass fed. So, uh, yeah, I think that seafood's great. Just make sure you're getting fat with it. Did, did you ever, um, when you were really pure with your seasonings, um, did you ever experiment with like smoked salt versus just oh, traditional okay. salt or like Himalayan salt versus sea salt? Did you ever kind of mess around with the different types of salt you were using? Black salt, pink salt, you know? I know a lot of carnivores that do. I have some friends of mine that do that, but I never did. I just stuck with my Redmonds because I, I'm so I'm just one of these people that if I find something that works, I'll just stay with it, <laughs> and sometimes too long. Um, but that's what I end up doing is I'm like, oh, Redmonds works. It's good. It's it tastes good um, to me after just doing Redmonds for a couple of years. Um, I didn't really have cravings for seasonings or anything. So when someone reached out and they were like, you want to try this pluck? I was like, well, I don't know, but why not? I just said, why not? I'll just do it. Um, I'm really glad that I did, but uh, yeah, I just really stuck to Redmond's for a couple of years. That's all I did. Wow. Well, I want to say that, just touch on that. I'm I'm sure we're going to end soon, but uh, we've kind of mentioned a little bit here and Amanda shared this about you and I just want to kind of honor that you're like this because I think you can agree that a lot of people in our fields uh, are not like this but this kind of concept of like not being so dogmatic about I'm carnivore you know and that's all everyone should be and just being so kind of like standing on that soapbox and shouting mm-hmm. to the world like this is I'm doing it it works for me it's going to work for you it's mm-hmm. like well this is what works for me. And and sometimes I vary. Like, I love that you're bringing in the humanity. And I think a lot of times um, in nutrition and diets in general, we just, we lose the humanity that, you know, Mm -hmm. some days you just need to eat differently than you normally Mm -hmm. eat. Yeah. I thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. And uh, it's been this whole thing of me coming out on social media and doing YouTube and doing Instagram. And really it's the people that have contacted me that have opened my mind, you know, because when I, it's so funny when I first started my YouTube channel a little over a year ago, I was like, Oh, I'm going to give you an update and everything's awesome. And everything was like sunny and awesome and wonderful. And then I started kind of getting people contacting me that were not doing awesome, that were having problems. And so it opened my eyes and my ears to, the possibility that some people need nuance and some people need higher fat and some people don't. And then some people don't want to be carnivore forever. And that's 
okay. I, I'm kind of getting to this point now and uh, shifting a little bit of my platform where I think that, you know, maybe people don't need to be carnivore forever. And then maybe it's not really even the best thing. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's going to be an interesting thing coming down the road this year. Yeah, I did. I just, just kind of opened that up, but yeah, I mean, I thank you. I appreciate that. Well, and I think, I think how we started this talk, I mean, this, my wife and I've been like this from day one. It's, it's really ultimately what it's all about. No matter what diet you're pushing, you could even be plant, but it doesn't matter is you believe you're helping people. You want to help mm -hmm. people, right? So that we all are, we're all propped up on that. We're, we're trying to help and do good, right? But the other thing, at least for some of us is that we are advocates of whole real food. Yes. Like on, on a very core level, that's what we're ultimately saying. Yeah. And that is proof that no matter what diet you're on, if it is whole food, real food, you're going to already be doing better than most people that are eating standard American diet. I agree. And I just, you know, like I mentioned, Dr. Pels, who I'm going to have that podcast out on Thursday. That's kind of where we ended our conversation because she's, she has vegans in her programs. She has keto, carnivore, paleo. She just, she said, I just don't want anyone's standard American diet, you know, and she believes variation is good and it's important for people. But she said, you know, we're all on the same team that we just don't think that people should eat standard American diet. They shouldn't eat the processed foods that they're just toxic and, and terrible for you. So yeah, it's like, where we just, if, if we come from that place of just really genuinely wanting to help people, I think that you just, you really can't go wrong with that. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Well, well thank you so much for your time. And yeah, for awesome. your expertise. yeah, we'll have to do an update video. So you guys feel free to message me on Instagram, or you can email me if you have questions. And then I'll be really curious. I'm sure the people watching will be curious to, to see like how that, you know, two weeks or 30 days, whatever period of time um, you decide to do, how it went. Yeah, yeah, so we're starting February 1st for those watching this video. Um, February 1st, 2021. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's going to be great. Before. You know what I've never done before? I've never done one of those like profile body shots. I am I am built or quite thin, but um, I don't know if I'll post it on plug, but uh, I have, I'm like a... I'm soft, you know, like yeah. I'm not, I get, I do get bloated sometimes and I'm really curious to see how. We should how do it for yourself. No matter what. Yeah. yeah for yourself, I'm take photos, good. take measurements. That's what I did. I mean, I was absolutely shocked with my before and after just after 30 days, I still have that. I mean, because it looks, it was only seven pounds that I lost, but it literally looks like 15 pounds or more. I mean, it was the amount of inflammation I had, like I said, I was coming off Christmas and holidays and uh, all the things, but yeah, it was a pretty dramatic um, transformation in just 30 days. Yeah. Wow. Well, awesome. Well, definitely. We yeah. need to do a, a check-in probably like, I, and just so we're clear. So I think Amanda said we're, we're committing to 14 days, but we're probably going to go longer. I think we just, we just like to always give ourselves that breathing Little room. Yeah. It's kind of, check in with our bodies see how we're feeling before we just jump into this idea of like oh we're going to do 30 days no matter what it's like well if it's not working it's not working you know what i mean like yeah we got to kind of listen to our bodies i 100 percent am behind that and yeah i always tell people try to do at least 30 days to really experience the full benefits but if you are getting in there and having all kinds of stuff that's just not working for you then yeah having that self-awareness is really important also for sure well, thank you so cool. much. Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Well, have a great